So what was it like for you guys? Is this the first time you've seen it with a Western audience or not? Uh, second time for me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we, uh, we've been to Udini, Italy. Ah, right. Yeah. Anything surprising about the audience reaction tonight or what you expected? Uh, something that I doubted before that uh, because something uh, that's uh, very oriental actually that can be shared uh, by uh, audience of other culture. So because sometimes uh, when we uh, started to do the movies with kind of uh, uh, local aura of any place that uh, uh, because uh, now the distribution of films we have to distribute film to other markets in the world. So sometimes some things very local uh, I'm not quite sure whether it can be shared by others, but uh, uh, for this film, uh, so far, as far as I know, that uh, 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 most of the elements in this film actually can be shared by others. Uh, well, one thing I wanted to ask you both about is, uh, Ip Man seems to be the second character in this movie. This movie mostly seems to be about the character of Hong Kong. And I'm wondering if you can talk a little bit about how you wanted to present Hong Kong in this film and how you used Ip Man to tell the story of Hong Kong. Uh, for me, making this movie is just like making a time machine. Uh, so everybody can uh, go back um, to 1950s, the, uh, 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 the Hong Kong time. And then, uh, because we have uh, in, in Hong Kong, uh, because it's, uh, it's developing so fast, so we have lost a lot of our historical heritage. Um, but on the other side, we would like to preserve the past. So uh, this movie is very important, I mean, for me and Herman, because we have um, sort of documented uh, something in the, in, in, in the drama so that everyone can uh, have our collective memory. But the, you guys have made two Ip Man movies now, and the first one was very much an action film. When did you two decide to make the decision to make this one a bigger film about Hong Kong and not only about Ip Man? Was that the idea at the start, or did that uh, come later? And I think uh, most of you know that uh, uh, the first Ip Man movie uh, uh, that I made actually is the third one. And then uh, this one, uh, when I made this one, then uh, almost, uh, I think uh, you, you know that Wong Kar-wai uh, spent five years making uh, Grandmaster. And during the, uh, uh, the last year of uh, his production, then I made this one. So I can't say if this is the fourth one or the fifth one. It's a kind of confusion. <laughs> so uh, anyway, so uh, for uh, the Inman, we have already some Inman before. So what uh, I, uh, when uh, we uh, collaborated to make this movie, I just tried to find something different from uh, uh, the two Inman movies before. So uh, for the uh, Inman The Legend is Born, and as well as uh, this one, Inman The Final Fight, I, we spent a lot of effort to contextualize this uh, hero, this uh, martial arts uh, grandmaster, into uh, uh, his uh, uh, place of origin. So uh, also place of origin is kind of uh, confusing, because uh, uh, Ip Man, his place of origin is in Fushan, but uh, uh, the place that made Made him famous is in, in Hong Kong. So uh, uh, for the uh, Ip Man, the legend is born. The younger Ip Man during the Fukushima, we try to contextualize uh, the the story with what's happening at that time. And uh, for the uh, later part, the autumn years of Ip Man, then uh, when he went to Hong Kong after the uh, Liu China uh, was established. So at that time, Hong Kong, uh, how how Hong Kong looked. Uh, like, uh, and what's the social context, and uh, what's the uh, uh, colonial context affected uh, Yip Man and his uh, relationship with uh, his uh, uh, pupils? Let's try to make uh, some contextualization and articulations uh, of this man uh, to the, his uh, surroundings. But other directors and writers have made movies about Hong Kong's past in the 50s. 
uh, but their style seems to be very sentimental uh, and a lot of nostalgia. And you guys concentrated on the labor movement and the strikes and the colonial politics. Uh, why do you feel like this is so important for Hong Kong's identity? Uh, because uh, if uh, we try to look back the history of Hong Kong in the past uh, 100 years, uh, the uh, labor movement uh, is something that uh, we cannot avoid if we uh, really want to tell the story of, uh, about Hong Kong history. And uh, also, uh, uh, actually, uh, uh, I think uh, starting from uh, maybe the 1920s, there's uh, 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 Guangzhou and Hong Kong uh, general strike. It's, uh, it was the longest strike in world history, in, uh, I mean the labor movement in the world. Actually, uh, the labor movement un uh, up to today is still happened in Hong Kong, but the scale and the way it, uh, uh, the labors that uh, they uh, manifest their uh, demands and requests, the ways may be different, but the things is still uh, there. So uh, the labor movement is something that uh, we can't avoid. And actually, when, uh, uh, as I mentioned earlier, when we are trying to contextualize the story uh, with the social context, that, uh, but still something uh, I uh, cannot tell uh, that incidents in this movie. For example, uh, the riot of Hong Kong uh, during the 1967. So in the lifespan of uh, uh, Yemen in this movie is about from uh, 1950 and then up to 1972. So something very important happened in 1967 should be included in this movie, but still uh, uh, because of some problem, actually censorship problem. So we, we have to uh, avoid the part. Because this is a co-production? Yes, it's a co-production. Uh, in title, in name, in the name of co-production. <laughs> and uh, we do have uh, sentimental elements. It is uh, all about the lives um, back in 1950s. Uh, those were the time. Um, it was the time that when people will buy a blanket as a gift. Nowadays, no. If you get married, I don't think people will buy you a blanket. And then uh, even, but. Because the, the society is so affluent now, they even give new stuff to the Salvation Army. And uh, those, uh, that was the time when people are so hungry that they have to sell their children. And then, um, but uh, that was also the best of the time when people won't sell their dignity. Uh, like uh, at the ending part of Yip Man, this movie, um, he won't trade his... Um, achievement for an apartment. Uh, they have, they, there was no Wall Street values back then. One of the things that's interesting about this film is the there is no individual hero. It's all about his school, his students. Uh, at the end, he does not rescue his student alone. He comes with all his students. Uh, this movie seems to be very much about uh, collective action. And I'm wondering, since you made the first Ip Man movie, uh, the Occupy movements have happened, and there was an Occupy Hong Kong. I wonder if that influenced this attitude that collective action is so important? Um, to me, it's not just uh, because uh, it's, uh, to me, it's uh, simply try to make a hero uh, uh, from a more realistic approach. Uh, because uh, when you look close to uh, or look into a person, then he still has to eat, uh, he has to go to the toilet, uh, he just don't. <laughs> Not a, a fighter. Uh, he can he can be uh, very powerful, but uh, he still a human being. Just like when we are uh, uh, looking at somebody from a distance, that that hero is uh, very high. But when you uh, get close to him, he's still a hero, but he still possesses the very human side uh, as a human being. In the film, kung fu is portrayed as a little bit useless. Uh, it cannot make money, it cannot feed people. Uh, do you feel like there is a place where Kung Fu is useful or is it ultimately a thing that is very, not very useful at all? Of course, it's not as useful. Even uh, the Kung Fu master, they uh, still, they still survive, uh, the survived Kung Fu master that I met, of course Kung Fu is not as useful as before because we have a gun, we have the atomic bomb, so. 
But is there any part but of I, But I think it is the, the virtue part of learning yes. martial arts. You know, it comes from uh, Shaolin, and, uh, and actually uh, they have uh, some Buddhism, religious stuff inside. That's the part how to be uh, a decent man in martial art. Uh, it's uh, it's the, ma the things that matter. So, uh, excuse me, to be exact, so when uh, we are talking about uh, how useful is uh, martial arts or Kung Fu, it's, uh, to be exact, in terms of what? In terms of uh, the, just like Erica just mentioned, uh, spiritually, there's uh, still some virtue, some esteem uh, about uh, martial arts. And also, uh, to be exact, uh, martial arts and Kung Fu is actually is two different things uh, in the uh, context or uh, content. Can you explain the difference? Uh, martial arts, well, for example, now uh, there is uh, the official, uh, the office, uh, the, uh, the uh, Chinese officials, they address this kind of things as martial arts. That's for performance. And Kung Fu origin, the very original Kung Fu uh, in, uh, started in the south of China. It's kind of that you can defend and attack. So for martial arts, maybe it's a broad, in a broader sense. But for Kung Fu, uh, it's a, a kind of that uh, you can... Uh, uh, in, in a simple word, you can fight and you can defend. So martial arts, just like some uh, very national occasions, uh, especially in the Chinese mainland, uh, the last national days, then you can uh, see some Shaolin monk and they are uh, doing something like uh, like the, uh, some special skill. Lot as you can uh, see that it's really. Uh, rehearsed, not the real fight. So it's kind of performance. Of course, uh, you still can be a kind of sport. This movie, oh yes, please. Uh, just like the Spider Man. For me, it's not the uh, that, you know, coming out of this, uh, the, the, the spider thing is most important. It is the word that with great power comes, uh, you have the great responsibility. Mm -hmm. That is the, the spirit of uh, being Spider Man. So being Ip Man. It is not his kung fu. It is uh, his way of life that, uh, which is uh, concluded at the ending of the story. He has written a, a couple of, uh, can I say, I don't know what's that. Uh, the Try to stop uh -huh. He said, being a person, you should be, uh, you should have a root like a tree, but your leaves, you can, you can feel free in the wind, and then, then um, you should be like a Chinese corn, which is. Square inside, which means you have your principle, but you should be round at the edges. Um, in this film, when is you, the, the martial arts master, uh, Ip Man, is played by Anthony Wong Chao Sang. When is the last time the two of you worked together? Uh, last time. Not, not uh, so long uh, ago, right? Uh, uh, yes, the woman like of me were like, yes, mm. woman like. Uh, so, uh, is it? But also, when he was starting out, uh, you two worked together on one of his, one of your both most famous films, the uh, the Char Su Bao, the Untold Story. Uh, <laughs> it always gets applause. Um, how is working with him now? I mean, you two have worked together for twenty something years. Is he a very different actor now than he was then? Mm, it's very easy going because I'm to get used to him and his get used to me. So uh, because uh, we, we are, we've known each other for uh, earlier than uh, the untold story. So uh, we have kind of mutual understanding. Uh, of course, and I, I admire him as a, uh, because he's really a very good actor. And so uh, sometimes uh, I heard that some people say that uh, he's difficult. Yes, everyone can be difficult. But uh, uh, when you say something, someone is difficult, it doesn't make sense. Difficult under what? <laughs> Under what condition? That's important. So uh, when people say that he's difficult, I, I don't know what they're talking about. But his acting style also seems to have become very uh, much uh, quieter yes. than it used to be. Is that a change you've seen happening over the years? or? Yes, uh, but, but uh, uh, it's not uh, uh, special uh, to him. Actually, when we uh, try to look at the uh, films in the Hong Kong cinema, those uh, actings in the 1980s uh, or early 1990s, the uh, method or the ways that the actors or actresses they uh, perform their role in the movie is more outgoing. But now the, they uh, reserve more things inside. So uh, it's kind of a, a, a change of the trend 
And and of course, uh, uh, I I wonder uh, if you know that Anthony uh, went to London uh, the, to uh, attend a course of acting uh, in 1996 or 97. After that, his way of acting uh, to me, I I can observe some difference. Uh, between uh, 1999, 96 or 97, and after he uh, uh, came back from London. At what point did you know that he was going to play Itman? Uh, was this before writing the script? You knew he was cast? So when you were writing the script, you were writing for him? Yes. And but how actually, I think uh, what was in my mind is I'm writing the real Ip Man as close as the real Ip Man as possible. I don't care about Anthony because I think he's so good that he can, he can do it very well, he can deliver. Were there any ideas you guys had at the script stage that never made the movie that you really regret losing? Uh, any, any ideas for, for scenes or, or parts of the film that you had in the script but did not film that you wish, that you regret? What I regret already <laughs> disappeared in the script. Uh, of, um, in two senses, uh, first, something that I, don't, I know that it cannot be put into the, the script. And uh, uh, let's say it, we would like to put more uh, during the 1952. Uh, the, for example, like yeah, uh, uh, why, why, why Iman came to Hong Kong? Mm. Why? Yeah. Uh, actually, uh, uh, why we. we I haven't put the reason in the, in the film, of course I know. And how his son uh, went to Hong Kong, I know. But it's not explicitly shown in the movie. And uh, what Iman is going uh, in, uh, lived, uh, how Iman lived his life during uh, 1967, I know. But that part is not put on the Maybe screen. you can explain to the audience. Please. Yeah. Why, yeah. Why he, Especially about why he 1967. Came to Hong Kong yeah. and how his son uh, uh, for, for example, uh, because uh, uh, Iman worked for the KMT. Uh, the Nationalist Party of uh, China. And then, uh, because this is co-production, we have to enter uh, China. So something about KMT and the Communist uh, Party is usually is banned. And uh, for the riot, for the uh, riot happened in 1967, it's supposed to be initiated by the communists. Mm. So the, uh, someone don't want us to talk about it. I'm curious, so what, what was Ip Man's reaction to the riots in 1967? I mean, he must have been quite old by then. Yes, yes. But uh, neutral in a way. Mm. In a way, it's like uh, uh, the last part of this movie that you can be very uh, cynical, very acute inside, but how you react and how you uh, 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 portray or project yourself can be in a very uh, smoothened way. Uh, way so that's uh, actually it's, it's, uh, as far as uh, I know, and according to our research, this is his attitude towards life uh, uh, throughout his life. I have one more question before we take questions from the audience. Um, Bruce Lee appears in this film. Uh, the, the back of Bruce. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> the Lee family is very sensitive about how he's portrayed. I mean, it's one reason there are so many It Man movies because no one can make a Bruce Lee movie, uh, using his image. Were you guys worried about this? Did you get permission? I mean, what did you do to try to, um, because he doesn't come across as the greatest. He comes across as a little arrogant. And I'm wondering how you went around deciding to portray him and how you decided to approach it. And uh, Bruce Lee, I think, because, because Bruce Lee is so, uh, so, so famous, so uh, when we try to uh, portray it meant uh, Bruce Lee should be part of it. And uh, for, uh, actually, uh, I think that, and of course, uh, I know that, uh, that you recognize the one that uh, appeared at the end of this movie as Bruce Lee. Actually, we haven't addressed him as Bruce Lee. It's just common understanding. So uh, uh, I think that everyone knows that because the, everyone, everything about Bruce Lee is copyrighted uh, with his uh, wife and uh, her daughter. And uh, so suppose that uh, we, uh, according to our understanding, the Americans too so liberal. But someone, they try to monopolize some uh, uh, public figure. And then uh, his, uh, the interpretation towards that uh, figure so uh, I don't know why, but anyway, uh, 
uh, if the law uh, allows someone to do that and we have to abide to the law in a sense, then and, and on the other hand, we still want to express something, then we just try to find something in the middle. Uh, let's take some questions from the audience. The question is, yesterday in the Q&A, they talked about how most of old Hong Kong has been torn down. Uh, it's a modern city now. Almost none of the old buildings are left. So how did you shoot this? Uh, did you shoot in Hong Kong? Were, was it digital? Did you have to go to a sound stage? How did you recreate Hong Kong? Uh, we shot uh, the whole film, uh, except 20 seconds of the footage. Uh, all the... Uh, uh, footage of this uh, movie that was, was shot in uh, Fusan and we... Uh, sorry, sorry. So this whole movie about Hong Kong's history was shot in China? In China, <laughs> yes. yes. But, but uh, it's a very good lesson to us. Uh, uh, first of all, because uh, these buildings, this cityscape is not uh, uh, in Hong Kong now. And uh, it's a very good lesson to me and also to my crew, especially the art department. We spend a long time doing research and there's uh, uh, thousands of pictures and then uh, we, it seems that we uh, went through a, a course of uh, the past and then uh, try to uh, uh, regenerate uh, something that uh, now is already lost in Hong Kong. In addition to recreating the, the landscape of old Hong Kong, how about creating, recreating the speech patterns, the, the manners, the, the habits of people? Did you have to teach your actors? <laughs> Uh, I won't say teach, I just give some motive or direction. But anyways, I'm very aware about the language or the, 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 uh, the how they speak. Uh, because, uh, for example, like uh, my father and my mother, they uh, speak Cantonese with kind of accent. And the four uh, richest men in Hong Kong, they uh, speak Cantonese with accent. So one of the, the characteristics of uh, the language or the way that uh, the people uh, speak Cantonese during that time is kind of accent from different provinces or different parts uh, or uh, the dialects, the idioms, uh, very local idioms from everywhere of uh, uh, the Chinese mainland. You should mention Anthony's accent. In Anthony's the accent is a kind of uh, uh, Fushan accent. So he is not using uh, my Cantonese accent. He's using a uh, Fushan's uh, dialect, which is quite close to uh, Cantonese. And uh, of and on the other point, uh, I don't know how far that I can uh, uh, I have done in in the film. The way the people walk and uh, the the way they uh, 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 for example, like uh, Anthony Wong holding the bowl, the rice bowl, is something like that. Youngsters won't do it. They do it like this. This, this is a very, uh, very old style. Uh, how would Anthony Wong get so good at Kung Fu? <laughs> uh, 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 actually, Anthony uh, has been practicing uh, Kung Fu for a very, very long time, but a lot of uh, Wing Chun is another school of uh, uh, martial arts. And he uh, practiced and learned Wing Chun uh, about uh, uh, 40 months before the actual film shoot of this uh, movie. And uh, before the, uh, we, the actual film shoot of this movie, uh, Anthony uh, the took part in an other production, that's a Chinese TV drama. And then uh, that uh, wooden dummy followed him everywhere. And uh, that dummy was situated in his room, and he uh, practiced uh, uh, Wing Chun every day. He said the transportation cost of the wooden dummy can buy, actually yeah, yes. buy 10 dummies. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, Ip yes. Chun, Ip yeah. Man's son? Yes. Yeah. If anyone didn't see, Ip Chun, Ip Man's actual son, plays the, the shop owner. Yeah, right? yeah, yes. Yeah, yes. The question is, did he help with the research and background? Yes, yes of course, yes. So, uh, we, we talked to him a lot, and especially for me, because I have nothing to do at the set, so I have to entertain <laughs> the, the master. And then uh, he told us, that, uh, I'm not sure if you uh, realize that uh, Yip Man, uh, he smokes cigarette like this. So, uh, yes, yeah, it's according to Yip Chun. According to Yip Chun, uh, he collects the ashes with his hand. <laughs> uh, there were some scenes that were very, very intimate, and then other scenes that seemed to have a lot of, of distance from what was happening. Was that because you didn't know or have a clear idea of what was happening, or was there... What was the strategy, I guess, with the film? Okay, thank you for your question. Actually, the, uh, the, 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 
The part that, uh, the ro romantic part, especially the appearance of the new girlfriend, is the most difficult part in the script for me. Because the Miss, Mr. and Mrs. Yip, they are so mo a model couple in the Kung Fu uh, movie uh, phenomena. So th the entering of a another lady is, uh, is dangerous for me because uh, most likely the female audience uh, will, will not like that lady. Just like everybody was uh, were laughing when the, 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 when the apprentice say she's a vamp, right? Yes, and, but uh, this part is more difficult to deal with. And, and but fortunately, um, <coughs> I, think, uh, I think we, can, uh, we have overcome. And then, uh, yes, th there are parts that we are not sure, especially why the lovers uh, drift apart. That, you know, the uh, northern lady suddenly uh, disappeared. I just got the wrap it up sign because we've got people coming in for Enter the Dragon. But the last two things I want to say is, first off, I want to thank you guys for choosing to include the footage of Ip Man at the end. It was, none other movie has done that. And I think it's a real shame. Uh, and, and, I, and one more thing, that footage is in the public domain. It's not copyrighted. Uh, Wing Chun is for everyone, not owned by anyone. And I also want to say, yeah, I also want to say, Every movie, it begins with a script, and then the director has to take it on a long journey to the screen, and then they wind up in New York. I want to thank you guys for coming tonight. This was great. Thank you very thank much. You, thank you. And thank you all you for coming. <laughs>